So we've been in the topic of integration for a while now, and what we're looking at here is a part of the reference sheet which encapsulates a lot of the knowledge and skill that we've been developing. So alongside all of these derivatives that you can see down here, this is, you know, here's the product rule, uh, this is the chain rule, you got the quotient rule over here. Um, you've also got all these equivalent or parallel statements about integration. So you know how to differentiate a trig function like sine x. Well, this is what happens when you integrate something to do with sine x and the result that you get. Now, there's this result on this page that uh, you need to know how to use and you have been shown it. But I want to explain it in a little more detail because even though a lot of people know how to use it or at least produce it in a question, a lot of people don't understand it. And uh, it's this result down here to do with logs. So to explain what I mean, I want us to come back to the fact that differentiation and integration, uh, they're obviously related. Uh, we kind of introduce them as reverse processes, but we've already explained a little bit about how they're not exactly reverse processes. Uh, there's a simple example of this. If you differentiate something like x squared, we know that that goes to 2x. But if we were trying to undo that process, if we were integrating 2x with respect to x, we would expect to get something like x squared. We would expect to reverse this process. And we do, but we note that when we have a think about the primitive function, there's actually a bunch of different functions that could all differentiate into 2x. We could have had x squared plus 1 or x squared minus 5 or, you know, x squared plus, who knows, a million. Anything could have actually within this family have differentiated to give us 2x. And so we sort of encapsulate that by adding on what we call the constant of integration. So this plus c indicates it could be, you know, the plus one or the minus five or the plus a million, whatever constant that you like. So differentiation and integration, they're obviously really tied together. Everything we know about dif integration so far has come from our knowledge of differentiation, but there are some very subtle distinctions and one of them has to do with when you're thinking about logarithmic functions. So let's dive into this a little further. When we differentiate a function like say log x, the natural log, so we've got a base e here. One of the results that we showed before is that it's equal to 1 over x. But and that well that is usually where we stop. But we do need to remember that that's not exactly completely accurate. Um, and you can see why by drawing a quick graph of this and seeing what's going on. If I ever think about what log x looks like, it's a curve that looks something like this. This is a very, very rough uh, sketch of y equals log x. And when we think about uh, what the gradient function of this will be, what the derivative will be, well, it makes sense that we do have um, this part of the graph here of 1 over x, because you can see here that um, if I have a look at this graph, the entire section here, um, everything that you can see in log x, it's an increasing function. Um, but not only is it increasing, it's, it's very steep over here, so it's very, the gradient function is very positive. And as you go progress further along the graph, as x increases, you have a very shallow gradient here, still positive, but it's, it's a smaller value. So that's why you can see the gradient function dropping down like this. So that's why we would say, uh, this derivative here, dy on dx, it does match 1 over x, and we've actually shown in the past that it doesn't just look like that, it is exactly that. But importantly, it's not the entire graph of 1 over x, because there's actually a section of 1 over x over here that I haven't drawn. Uh, 1 over x, the hyperbola, it also includes uh, a section that looks like this. But of course, that is irrelevant to the log curve because the log curve doesn't exist in this section over here. Um, it has a domain restriction on it. It only exists on the right-hand side. And so, in fact, a more accurate way to say this is that the derivative of log x is a specific part of 1 over x, namely that part where x is greater than 0. Now, this is very important, this domain restriction, because it means that if I'm trying to reverse this process, if I'm trying to integrate 1 over x dx, it will equal log x plus our constant of integration, but only in this particular domain over here, only for x is greater than 0. So if you start in this section, then you will end up with log x. Now, this is important to keep to one side, because if I now consider sort of a uh, very similar function, the log of negative x 
Okay. Well, what do I get from this? I can use chain rule in this case. I've got an uh, inside function, which in this case is negative x. So I need to consider the inside derivative. Um, that, that would be negative 1 in this case. And then I divide by the inside function now, which is negative x. It doesn't see, take too much to see. That simplifies to 1 over x. And immediately, this makes us sort of confused because you're sort of like, well, hold on a second. Um, I got 1 over x over here, and somehow I have the same derivative, even though um, I'm clearly starting with a different function over here than I had in the first place. How can it be that two different functions have the same derivative? Well, the answer lies in what we we're thinking about before with this domain restriction. Um, what does the log of negative x, what does this function look like? Well, when we slap a minus sign on the front of the x there, the effect is that we have this horizontal reflection. Um, what does log of negative x look like? It looks just like the log x curve, except for the fact that it's been reflected across the y-axis, that is to say, horizontally. Now let's have a look at this guy. What can we say about its gradient function? Well, for the entirety of its um, domain here, you can see that it's a decreasing function. Um, and not only is it decreasing, but it starts off kind of shallow, so you're going to have small negative values for the gradient here. And then as you progress further, further and further closer to uh, x equals zero, it gets very steep. So you're going to have very negative values. So in other words, <clears throat> that exactly matches what we have for this other part of the hyperbola. So what we have here is 1 over x, as we saw up here by thinking about, oh, what happens when we differentiate? But importantly, we have a particular section of 1 over x, namely that section where x is less than zero. So there's this domain restriction happening there. Okay. So now we can say, well, if you're integrating one over x dx, following what we've seen up in this section up here, um, you might not end up with log of x. You might actually end up with log of negative x plus the constant of integration if you are starting within a different domain, if you're starting with x is less than zero. Okay, now what I want to do is take these two ideas together and try and um, fit them into one because when you have a look on the face of it, this is quite confusing. You're like, well, if you integrate 1 over x dx, you might end up with one of two things depending on what domain you're interested in. So now if I sort of uh, fold these both into one, let's take this integral and this integral. If I say you've got 1 over x and uh, you're integrating that with respect to x, you might equal to, well, you might equal to one of two things, and I can include both of them in this statement. You might end up with log x plus c if you are in this x is greater than zero domain restriction. Or alternatively, you might end up with log of negative x plus your constant integration if you're in this x is less than zero domain. Now, this is really weird. We don't have, uh, so far anyway, we haven't met any functions that do this and kind of go to either one primitive or a completely different primitive based on their domains. Um, this is weird and awkward looking. If only there was a more concise way of being able to say, if you start with this one thing, it's defined as two different things based on what your domain is. And conveniently, there is notation for this. We do have an idea that matches this. When we want to say something is uh, positive, if your value is positive, and then you take the negative of it, if your value is negative, this is exactly what we call the absolute value of x. That's what it is by definition. We would say, um, just putting over here to the side, the absolute value of x is equal to sometimes x, you know, provided that x is greater than zero. Uh, if you have the absolute value 5, the absolute value 5 is just 5, because 5 is greater than zero. But sometimes the absolute value of x is negative x, if the value of x that you're putting in is negative. Uh, the absolute value of negative 4 is going to be negative of negative 4. You just get 4, and that's because negative 4 is less than zero. So you can see I have taken these two domains, and I've kind of collapsed them into one. And we can generalize this further. Uh, we can say if we are integrating uh, anything which looks like f dash on f, 
but with respect to x, that is the log, or the natural log, I should say, of f of x, provided you put those absolute value signs around. And this brings us full circle. This is the result that I was saying to you appears on the reference sheet. And a lot of people will kind of just parrot off this absolute value of x section over here without knowing why. Where does it come from, this result? It comes from the fact that when we differentiate, we can actually see these two parallel results uh, here for a positive domain and here for a negative domain. Therefore, both of these results will be valid primitives from this original integrand, depending on, well, what your domain is. So that's what I want you to take away from this, that this absolute value sign here doesn't just appear uh, by magic out of nowhere. It comes from what we know, um, our established knowledge of differentiation.